everybody and welcome to the first Scan Pro Audio webcast of 2014. Uh, big thanks to all of you who've been in touch over the last few months saying how much you've enjoyed them and uh, the uh, ideas for ones in the future. Uh, we've got some great ones coming up. We've got stuff from Aphex, we've got stuff from Moog and from Novation. We've got a whole bunch of stuff coming along. Uh, but tonight, we are very, very proud indeed to be doing an exclusive, straight from the NAM show. Uh, we have the... Uh, ever lovely bundle of goodness from the northeast that is uh, Mr. Andy Bensley and he's going to be showing this beautiful Apollo twin. Stick around, be right after this. Hi guys, I'm Andy with UA and I must say I'm incredibly proud and excited to present the Apollo Twin. So as Steve was saying, uh, this has just been announced at NAMM and the buzz about this box is incredible. I must say I've been incredibly excited to get my hands on it and it's living up to all expectations. So to begin with, um, UAD as a platform. Um, the last webcast I did was kind of back in May time and we did a kind of a fairly in-depth look at what Universal Audio and the UAD platform is all about. Um, and f for we're not going to go into too much detail about that tonight, but if anybody's got any questions on the live chat, please feel free to send them in and Tom can send them over and to me and we can discuss whatever you like. Um, so basically with the UAD platform, about 10 years ago when, let's say, off-the-shelf computers for audio weren't exactly powerhouses. So you were kind of limited track count, um, pretty much limited to native plugins. So every, every ounce of processing you had to do in the box was, uh, it was dictated by how good your computer was. So you would get maybe 10, 15, 20, 32 tracks into a session and your computer would be blowing pretty hard. Um, the idea of the UAD platform was to alleviate some of that load on the system. So by using external DSP processing, you were able to instantiate plugins that weren't hosted by the computer. The upshot of that was you could run more tracks, um, you could run slightly lower buffer sizes, reduce latency, um, and just have a system that was a little bit easier to live with. And you weren't kind of on the edge of your seat all the time when you were recording. Um, further on down the line, the UAD2 platform came along with more powerful DSP chips um, and allowing you to run uh, much more uh, sophisticated plugins with a lot more power, a lot more fidelity, and at the core of it, a lot more vibe and music, uh, musicality. So what UAD does incredibly well is being able to model the characteristics of classic pieces of analog gear. So take, for example, whether it's an API, EQ or where it's a Neve 1073, an LA2A1176, not only does it model the sound, but it's, it's the kind of musicality, the feel, the harmonics that are introduced by those pieces of analog gear. And to be able to have them available in the box, in the digital domain, is absolutely huge. So with computers being the way they are now, where there's so much power available, you can buy anything off the shelf and be able to run huge sessions. What UAD allows you to do is to be able to use tons and tons of plugins externally. So say for example with, a, with one of the Octo cards, eight chips of processing, so you can get up into kind of 90, 100 channels of audio and run kind of 50 plugins on there, which is outrageous. And to think that the, the, the sound of these plugins is incredibly musical and incredibly full. And anybody who's used UAD plugins or you speak to someone who has, Generally, they kind of make the same noises. They kind of come out and say how, how close they are to the real piece of analog gear, but when you put them into a session, how much size and vibe comes, comes to, a, to, a, to a project. So, the Apollo Twin. The Apollo Twin has, has come about um, because of the other members in the Apollo family. So, the Apollo 16, the Apollo Duo, the Apollo Quad. 
those being 19 inch rack units, um, more I.O., kind of more geared towards larger setups, especially with the 16, which will fit into a much larger studio setup, the Apollo Duo and Quad. Uh, great for mobile recording, great for, for kind of project studios. Apollo Twin is the desktop version of those guys. So they've shrunk down the I.O., they put it in a gorgeous form factor, but still retaining exactly the same quality that its bigger brothers have got. So it's a two-in, six-out interface with class-leading audio specs. So at this price point, this box is incredible. It outperforms a lot of other interfaces that are much more expensive. Um, and it's the only desktop interface to be able to host UED plugins. Um, on the top section of the of the twin, uh, it's made out of one piece of aluminium, um, sandblasted, and it looks fantastic. Kind of when you get one in your hands, you'll you'll see how cool it looks. It's just absolutely incredible. The build quality is incredibly solid, and the unit itself, when you pick it up, it's it's got a weight to it. It's kind of it's a it's a real piece of audio hardware. Um, so I'll give you the usual quick run through of the I.O. on it. So we've got two mic line inputs. On channel one, we've also got a hi -Z input. So when you plug your guitar or bass straight into the front, it recognizes that jack being put in there and goes straight into the hi Z mode on channel one. Um, in terms of outputs, we've got two line outputs, three and four. We've got a dedicated monitor output, just like, the, like its bigger brothers. You're not having to sacrifice any of your line outputs to feed your monitors. Um, on the front, we've got a uh, headphone out, uh, which is digitally controlled, so incredibly high resolution, great sounding headphone output. Um, there's SPDIF in or ADAT optical in, so you've got the option of hooking this up to um, an optical 8-channel mic pre, and you can actually track drums with this. So you can use it in a small setup, but when you need to expand, when you need to go and do a drum session, throw this in a bag with a laptop, um, your external 8-channel ADAT uh, pre, and find an interesting space, get a great drummer, find an interesting space, it sounds cool, throw some mics up, and you've got the same fidelity and the same quality, the same level of conversion as if you were working with some of its bigger brothers that are kind of slightly more studio bound that require extra bits of kit to, to be implemented with the Apollo Twin. It's really grab and go, and it sounds incredible. Um, there's a lock-in uh, PSU socket on the back, which is incredible. So anybody who has had issues where they're fiddling around the back of an interface and they lose the power supply down the back of the cables, this doesn't happen. Once it's in, it's locked in place and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, and finally, we've got a Thunderbolt port on the, on the interface. So this is a Thunderbolt only interface. Um, it seems to be that Thunderbolt is here. It seems to be the way that everyone's going. And for audio, it's an incredibly stable, incredibly wide bandwidth um, means of transporting audio back and forth from your interface. Coupled with that, we've also got UAD processing on there, so that, that bandwidth is incredibly useful. Um, on the top panel, we've got this incredible knob that controls a number of functions, and it's incredibly smooth, it feels, it's got sizable, it's got weight to it. Um, and it allows you to check to switch between channel one, channel two on the input side. Um, this preamp switch here selects between channel one and channel two also. On the right hand side we've got this monitor switch, which will then allow you to toggle between your monitor output and your headphone output. Again, we've got this control there. Um, on back over on channel one, so if I go to either one of these, I've got the ability to decide what input I've got, whether it's mic or line. I've got a high pass filter that I can engage, 48 volts fountain power, there's a pad, about 20 dB pad on there, and we've also got phase reversal. Um, on the final switch on the right hand side is a stereo link, so if you've got stereo keyboards or anything like that, you can then link channel 1 to channel 2. Um, 
a very straightforward interface to use and everything is there in the right hand. So when you're working with it, everything is quick. Everything is geared towards you making music and trying to get the mouse out of your hand as much as possible. Which is, when you're working with an artist, being, being able to respond to them quickly and being able to make decisions quickly and having that on the right hand is, is great. Um, one thing I really want to stress is the audio quality of the twin. Um, it's exactly the same converters as its bigger brothers, exactly the same pre's as its bigger brothers. And one huge, huge thing about the twin is the digitally controlled monitor outputs. So even when you get to the bottom of the travel and you're listening at incredibly low volumes, you're not losing any resolution. So if you need to speak to an artist, if you want to just kind of give your ears a rest if you're fatigued, you can monitor incredibly low levels without losing um, that detail and resolution. It's it's, it's an incredible thing to get in an interface at this price point. Um, so that on its own in an interface is fantastic. But because we're dealing with universal audio, there's something else that is incredible and is significant. When this first came about with the, with the bigger Apollos, it blew people away. And that's the ability to run UAD pl plugins in real time on the front end. So this means that you can plug in a guitar in the front end or a microphone in the front and be able to track through some of the greatest pieces of analog gear in recording history. So it's, as you run through the plug-in list of UA, it is a greatest hit of, of, of kind of modern and vintage recording. Um, the other side with UAD as well is the ability uh, with the Apollos is to monitor these with near zero latency. Um, so to give you an idea of the round trip, so the, the analog to digital conversion, the digital to analog conversion through plugins is around about 1.1 milliseconds at 96K. So you can stack up four UAD plugins, monitor through them, and you're getting 1.1 milliseconds of latency, which is absolutely nothing. So you plug a guitar in, it feels like you're going directly to tape. It feels like you're going into an analog console. It's instant. So any effects that you add onto there are real time. Any compression you add, when you lean into a vocal, the compressor leans right back. There's no lag, which is huge. This completely changes the way that you're able to record. Um, the way this is achieved is by the console application. So the console application is a standalone piece of software that runs on the computer. Um, separate from your DAW. So what this allows you to do is instantiate plugins on the front end um, to be able to give yourself a monitor mix in the control room or through your speakers and also create headphone mixes as well for your artists so you can give them a completely independent headphone mix to what you're listening to um, in the studio or in front of your speakers. Um, it's an incredibly straightforward way of working. The interface is incredibly clean. clean. So for example, we've got access to our mic pre's here, uh, our 20 dB pad, um, which is down there. We've got 48 volts phantom power. We've got our high Z input selected at the moment. So we've got a guitar cable in there, high pass filter and face switch. So if I, anything I select here is replicated on the interface. So if I press on the interface, same thing happens. Um, we've got these insert slots here, which we can instantiate any of our UAD plugins that we might have. So we can put those right on the front end there. And here, we've got the ability to send to various parts of the console. So we can send to our auxiliary returns. Um, we can create headphone mixes. So I can address any of the, the headphone output on the front, but also I can address outputs three and four on the back. So I've got one headphone output here, but if I send out three and four, I can go to a headphone amp. So I can create extra mixes. I can kind of send stuff to elsewhere, which is huge, which is really, really useful. Um, so an example of going direct would be if we plug a guitar in, just happen to have one here. Um, and what I've got is just the guitar jack cable going straight into the Apollo. So I've got metering on the unit itself. I can high pass it. I can various things I can change on there. So the phase, uh, also the preamp level. 
So that's being adjusted from the hardware, or I can adjust it from the console application itself. So if I load up uh, a preset from here, so something like I've got a, an angle uh, amp, which should come to life. Okay, so one of our uh, angle emulations, and this is guitar going into the interface, into the plugin, which is the angle amp, and then into an LA2A. So we've gone from a fairly anemic guitar sound to something that you could quite easily track with and get incredible results, but with zero latency. <laughs> And the eerie thing about these angle emulations as well is that you can roll the volume back and it cleans up like a real amp. So that is an example with a guitar. Uh, it's exactly the same thing for a vocalist as well. Being able to provide a headphone mix for a vocalist that is comfortable and sits them in the track is worth its weight in gold. Um, Say, for example, you've got an artist that wants EQ, compression, uh, reverb, and delay. What used to be the case is you would scramble around and try and find any piece of outboard gear that would kind of do the job. And generally, it would be um, a not-so-stellar reverb um, that wasn't being patched in elsewhere. So you'd kind of give them that and you'd give them a bit of EQ. And it was always a compromise. It was always that little bit of, mm, yeah, I can probably do that for you. Now it's a question of what reverb do you want? Do you want it to be a plate reverb? Do you want it to be a, a lexicon emulation? Do you want it to be, do you want a slap back? Do you want a tape delay? What type of EQ do you want? All of these options you can be incredibly positive with your artist, make them feel comfortable. And the upshot of it is you get them sitting in the track and getting them feel comfortable. And as I say, that's where great recordings come from. The yes, the mic is incredibly important, the pre is incredibly important, but getting your artist comfortable is you you're kind of already there, you know? Um on the console application on the right hand side we've got this insert effect tab now what this allows us to do is to be able to monitor effects or commit them to tape um, so that could be for example if I want to put a reverb on the front end or for example here um, this LA2A and the angle by hitting record that will commit this sound to tape um, so that that will be Logic, that will be Cubase, Pro Tools, whatever your Dora choice is. Um, say for example if I'm working with a vocalist and they want loads of compression and loads of EQ and I'm not too certain I want the project to go in that direction later on. I want, I want to make a decision on the mix at a later date. I can choose just to monitor that, that, um, that affected signal, give it to them in a headphone mix, they're happy, but this sound will not be um, committed to tape, leaving me to change it later on. Um, so having those options on the back end is huge, it's incredibly important. One new thing with the Apollo Twin, it introduces a slightly different looking console. Um, and that is the addition of this preamp slot on the left hand side here. Now what this does, it allows you to use a Unison plugin. So what is Unison? Unison is a brand new technology developed by UA which allows the interface and the microphone to kind of communicate with each other in a way that has never really done, been done before. Um, what Unison does is it has the ability to alter the impedance, the gain staging um, of a microphone coming into the interface and allow it to react in the way that the real mic pre would. So say for example if there's a certain impedance of a, of a classic mic pre, the mic hitting that will, there's a relationship there. There's a certain sound of a U87 going into a, uh, a 610 or, uh, or, an, or an API 512. There's a, there's a relationship there because of the impedance and the gain structure of that pre. So you have being able to, to kind of model the characteristics of a classic preamp giving you the feel and obviously the sound. Of, of doing that. So let's have a look at uh, where are we? something in this unison slot here. So what I've got 
is the UA 610B module. So this is an emulation of the 610 uh, Pre, which is a classic valve Pre uh, invented by Bill Putnam. Um, and the sound of this Pre is it's incredibly warm, it's incredibly fat. Plug a bass guitar into it, male vocal, it's just fantastic, incredibly smooth. Um, this is the sound of the old Sinatra recordings. That real kind of smoothness, uh, everything's kind of rounded off and it just feels um, incredibly musical. So what UA have managed to do is create a, a means of being able to communicate with um, any of these units and plugins. This is the first one that's come out. What we have the ability to do from the interface is to be able to hold the centre knob down for two seconds and we then have the ability to hold it down there. Come on. Where are we? Okay. Let's hit that off there. to control various gain stages within the plugin. So on the UA610 we've got a coarse gain switch here. We've also got a level control going into the tube and we've also got an output section here. Um, three various places where you can change the character and the colour of, of the gain of, the, uh, of this pre. So if I turn it on and hold that down what we'll get is a red dot, an orange dot, sorry, on the coarse gain. So I have the ability now to change that gain structure from the interface. And I have the ability to click on there and control up to three points of the gain structure of this, uh, this pre. So without it, the guitar going in there is the sound of a guitar going direct. Now if I engage that 610, I've got a I've got a warmth there, I've got a, a sense of size. And in an eerie way, the feel's changed. It's it allows me to kind of lean into it a little bit more. There's that feeling that I'm playing through something that's real rather than just an emulation. Um, I can add a lexicon reverb onto that. And that, to me, feels like a proper guitar sound. And again, with no latency. Very, very, very cool. Um, so if I pull up a, da, 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 a Pro Tools session, so this is something that I recorded uh, a couple of days ago with the twin. And essentially acoustic guitars, vocal, um, just a quick project. And the way I put it together was, started off with a click, bit of percussion, acoustic guitars. Um, we used a Coles River mic going directly into the interface, um, bass guitar going direct, um, vocal. Brilliant thing about it was being able to give the vocalist a headphone mix that she wanted. You know, it wasn't a case of me dictating to her what she couldn't have. Um, she wanted reverb, not a problem. She wanted delay, not a problem. You can create that vibe straight away from an, this interface. So if we have a quick listen to it, um, you can hear the sound of the Apollo Twin for yourself. Robert's got a quick hand. And look round the room, he won't tell you his plan He's got a rolled cigarette Hanging out his mouth, he's the cowboy kid Yeah, he found a six-shooter gun In his dad's closet hidden with a box of fun things And I don't even know what But he's coming for you, yeah, he's coming for you All the other kids with the pumped up you better run, better run, outrun my gun All the other kids with the pumped up kick 
So what we've also got is the ability to run an EUAD plugin on the back end. Um, so all that plugin processing I've got is I've got a, a duo here. So I've got two cores of processing, which will allow me to run a significant amount of plugins. Um, so they're available on the front end. But once you've tracked, you can open them up in your door and you've got them to use on the back end. Um, another important aspect of Unison, or the idea of Unison, is the ability to mimic uh, the hardware characteristics of these pre's. So say for example, um, the, the pre on, on the UA uh, Twin has a 20 dB pad. So if we go to something like a 610, which has a 15 dB, dB pad, it's also modeled. So these characteristics and interplay are accurately modeled. Um, an example would be with an API pre, which is incredibly hot. So when you engage that pad, um, there's an interesting thing that happens there, and that's where that classic sound comes from, where you're able to drive that circuit and get that size and that snap and transient response out of it. Um, one final thing with the Apollo Twin is, say for example, if we take this guitar part here, I've got, like with all the other Apollos, I've got the ability to have a dry recorded signal into the door. So that is going through the Unison um, 610 mic pre. Now that 610 slot or that Unison slot is always committed to tape because it's having uh, it's intrinsically linked to the to the physical hardware of the unit, so it's always committed to tape. Um, I've also got that Lexicon reverb running in real time as well. Now one of the great things is you can pick up various outputs from the console application, so I have the ability ability to actually record that wet. Uh, reverb return. So it means that you're not having to use processing power on the back end uh, for reverbs and delays. You can commit them in real time, have them recorded on a separate track, and they're there instantly. Um, so that is essentially the overview of the Apollo Twin. The final thing with it is you've got a number of new plugins that are bundled with this to kind of celebrate the launch of the twin. So you get the 610 mic pre, comes with it. You've also got the precision limiter, which is a fantastic limiter, great for mastering. Um, there's a, a version of the soft tube amp room, the half stack, like the Marshall JCM 800 emulation, which means that straight out of the box, you can plug a guitar straight in and record direct. Um, you've also got the bass amp room, the 810, which sounds fantastic. It's an incredible, uh, incredibly dynamic sounding bass, very round um, and very immediate. So if you've got a Mickey bass player DI, please put him through something like that. Um, you've got the Teletronics LA-2A, you've got the 1176 uh, LN, you've got Pultec Pro, you've got Reverb Pro, CS1. Um, so you've, you've got uh, a good amount of plugins to get underway with and start with your recordings. Um, as with the rest of the UAD platform, you can add on to there. You've got a 14-day demo of all of the UAD plugins, so you can use them in your sessions for two weeks, see what you think, and then either choose to buy them or not. Um, and you just kind of build your plugin collection from there. Um, and the final thing with it is it's a proper bona fide Apollo. It's not a shrunk down version. It's not a, not a kind of a cheap version. It's exactly the same level of quality and processing that you get with its bigger brothers, just in a smaller form factor, and is available to sit on your desktop. So that is the Apollo Twin. Um, have we got any questions in the the live chat? Um, yeah, we're starting off with a few. Are there any plans for Windows drivers for it? Um, that is something that is being looked at, but the, the issue, the stumbling block with that is the Thunderbolt connectivity. So once the hardware comes along, then yeah, that'll be something that's, that'll be uh, that'll be looked at. Also, uh, one here. Uh, what are the plans for Unison to make it into the other uh, members of the Apollo family? Is that imminent? Or? It is brilliant question. So anything that has a pre on it 
has the ability to horse Unison. It's Unison's kind of been living under the hood for, for, for a while now, and it's kind of, you have, this is the time that you have brought it to the fore. So with the Apollo uh, Duo and Quad, um, you've got the ability to use Unison in the next software update. Um, so one of the differences between the two interfaces, the Twin and the, uh, the Duo or the Quad, is on the, uh, on the Twin, we've got this kind of smooth volume pot that isn't stepped, whereas on the Bigger Brothers, it is stepped. So you've got um, stepped uh, gain control of that pre, but when you adjust it in, in software, it's completely smooth and you've got a, a, a linear control. But yes, it is in there and it can be used. Oh, that's great! I think all the uh, existing Apollo owners uh, will be very happy. Absolutely, they'll that. they'll get access to that, and 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 further on down the line, you know, in the way that UA work, there'll be some incredible emulations of pre's coming. So there'll be a number of ways that you can kind of mix and match microphones with pre's and get some incredible results out of it. Yeah, as as someone who has a big UAD Octo card at the minute, but no Apollo, I'm very, very jealous of this preamp modeling because it does look great. Well, the thing is that if you're already an existing um, satellite owner, or um, I don't know if you if you've got uh, if you've got an, uh, one of the, the the Octo cards, you can add that processing on the back end. So th the beauty of the the solo or the duo twin is that you've you've got the ability to stack up a few plugins on the front end. Maybe you don't need all that processing on the front end. You just want a few instantiations of various plugins. And then the back end, you can use um, your significantly more powerful card or, um, or satellite to, to kind of boost that up when, you, when it comes to a mix. Cool. Uh, I think what we do need to do is remind people that actually at the minute, on the rest of the Apollo range, um, until the end of March, I believe, you get the Thunderbolt card included in the price. That's right. Which so is quite a uh, it's 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 an bonus. incredible deal. Yeah. So th with the with the original Apollos, they were a Firewire 800 um, system that could be expanded via a Thunderbolt card, which was always extra. Um, so now until March, that is included. So you're getting uh, you're getting a hell of money with it, um, and you've got the option then to run it over Thunderbolt or over Firewire 800. But with Thunderbolt, you've got that expanded bandwidth. And it's what also happens is you get, there's a feel thing over Thunderbolt. The system just feels like it's, 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 it's more open. It feels like it's better able to, to kind of cope with whatever you want to throw at it. Um, so Thunderbolt is, is, is incredible for, for, uh, for users um, that are on the go or that are on desktop systems. Yeah, and of course, if you do want to think about buying an interface, if you scroll down to the bottom of the broadcast page, we've got deals on both the uh, Apollo twin models and the Apollos and the UAD solo and duo cards. So, so it's a, whichever it's a, your flavour. It's a UA loving. It is. Yeah, it's get a big involved. UA loving tonight here on Scan. <coughs> Finally, one thing uh, availability. Are these shipping now? They are shipping as of now. Cool. So it's, a, it's a it's a it's a proper launch. They are available, and uh, yeah, they are. If anyone's got any questions, get in contact with Scan, and they'll be able to point in the right direction. Yeah, I, I think so. And I'm going to reiterate one point that you have raised here, and that it's about you using this um, to do uh, vocals and give a monitor mix. Now, one of the acts that myself and Andy actually have been working with is some guys called TMS. And that name's going to mean a lot more to you in the forthcoming weeks because you're actually going to be able to win um, the chance to work with them in the studio. More news on that competition next week. Uh, but if you want to work with TMS, now these are the guys behind Professor Green and Little Emily Mix. Sandy, Little Mix. Um, they're basically Simon Cowell's go-to producers. Yeah, and it, it's kind of when, when, I, when I first met them, it, it, it's scary what these guys are capable of. They're, they are a, a production line of hit records, and we, they asked me to go down through Tom to, to speak to them about UAD, and to see the way that it, they are using the, um, the UAD products is incredible. And it's, in, it's incredibly inspiring to, to me um, to be involved with those guys because they're doing incredible work, and it sounds phenomenal. Yeah, quite. And one thing that they've said to me as feedback on UAD is that the minute that they've started using the Apollo, uh, they've got the Apollo quad, um, 
and using that on the on the monitor mix for the vocalists they've had big vocalists come through and say that was the best monitor mix i've ever had I, i've sounded the happiest in my headphones and they've got a better performance out because that's of that's it. the key word it, it it's happy having someone smiling in the booth i think you, you're on in a straight away if you can get them in a place where they feel comfortable they will give you so much more of themselves as an artist um and for, for, for guys like tms to kind of come out and say that it's it's fantastic yeah, I think it's backing up well, all of the team here think anyway, because yeah. uh, we're all... Uh, <laughs> we all have them. <laughs> yeah, so we've, we've all joined the club. Mm -hmm. um, we have got uh, one more question that's coming. Yep. Um, mm. Right now, if you get one of these, can you use a satellite or the PCIe cards with them? Um, or is that to come in the future? Uh, no, you should be able to... Uh, at the moment, uh, the next release of the drives, you should be able to use them in tandem. So be able to use your existing UAD processing on the back end. So um, it's just it's just waiting for the next. Um, yeah, I think it's, I, th I think it's 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 either it's either qualified now or will be qualified very shortly. Okay, great. Well, I think that's it for the chat room. Um, let's run some titles. And let's run some titles and uh, swap over. So, thanks to Andy and uh, all the guys at uh, UAD. Um, we really do. Uh, you know, we live this stuff here at Scan. It's it's not a, a joke, and it wasn't uh, something Tom was saying flippantly. For all the members of the Pro Audio team own this gear. Um, thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you over the next few weeks and months. As I said, there's a lot of stuff coming up next week. We've got the guys from Apex, uh, and we look forward to seeing you then. But until then, thank you to Andy, thank you to the guys at UAD, and thank you to you for watching. Good night.